going. So, welcome everyone to episode 13 of the Simple Gear Podcast, the 13th and final episode of the podcast, which makes us both very sad. I, you know, it's weird, but I really enjoy doing this podcast because it was just a way for me to freak out more about how awesome Simpho Gear is. Exactly. And speaking of how awesome things are, tonight I am joined, as always, by my good friend C-Tactics, a man known for once throwing a flaming laptop out of his two- two-story window. How are you doing tonight, C? It was actually a desktop, but I... You know, the, it doesn't matter. It's semantics at this point. It's exactly. still a computer. And I said something that's actually true about you for once. Yes, that part actually really is true. <laughs> Exactly. See, I told you I was going to introduce you to something true in the final episode. Let me tell you, keeping that window open was a little difficult, too, because it was like a really, really old house. I can... You should live stream you doing that. I, I, if I still... If that house still existed... <laughs> Just go reenact it? I would, I, would do, I would do very much that. <laughs> okay, when I get rid of my computer, I'll like throw it out a window and then record it for internet... Oh, exactly. But you gotta, like, light it on fire. I think there might be a fire hazard right now with the heat. But yes. Even even better. You could take an OG Xbox from, like, 2001, light it on fire, throw it out a window, and then, like, jump out the window and land on it, and it would, like, pretty much be okay. I'll take your word for it. Can I borrow your Xbox? I don't have an OG Xbox. Can I borrow your Xbox? I guess. Okay, so speaking of Xboxes, we have Simfo Gear. And yes. Oh, yes. Simfo Gear. Yes, read the summary. Simfo Gear episode 13. <clears throat> Let's make history with a light that even the gods don't know. Which is a long title. But it is like a similar quote to an actual quote in this episode. Final battle with Shinha begins. Carol sacrifices herself to save the Simfo Gears, and Hibiki and the Simfo Gears defeat Shinha. Miku is saved and smooch smooch. It wasn't a smooch. Was it was it it wasn't a smooch. It was a hug. It it was it was the promise of a future smooch. Oh, we especially got that at the end when they're going Oh, did you see the after credits scene? I did. That's okay. the future that's the promise of this future smooch. Exactly. Yes, they show as much smooching as there's in other shows that are known for its yaoi. Although I am disappointed uh that we did not get uh Subasa and Maria smooching. Oh, that was in the after after credit scene. There's an after after credit scene? Only in my imagination. Interesting. Okay. I know no things about rising. Oh yeah. I mean like the other night I reinvented Fruits Basket where Kisa was an actual cat. She was still adorable. Alright, I've learned things about <laughs> Rising today. So speaking of learning things about Rising, this episode of Simple Gear, I really liked how it started, like, you have them falling from the sky, and that's, like, the callback to the uh, promo image. There's actually a lot of that this episode, like, calling back to, like, the promotional stuff. Yeah, it did a little bit last episode, too, but, but this, like, this episode, the promotional art is the last scene of the show. <laughs> Which, yeah, that fits... Perfectly. You can definitely tell that they're like keeping everything in mind as they brought it forward for this episode. They did that the whole season too, but even more here. Yeah, yeah. They, they I mean, what? There's a part in this episode where they just have a bunch of characters as well. Yeah. And like Fine is there, Kanbe. It's like Kanbe. All, all the like characters who had died are like coming back to like show how because of them we got to this point. Right, it was a it was a great moment. This this whole episode really was like, it felt like at this point they ran out of stuff to reference, and then they were like, "All right, let's reference, let's reference everything." Everything <laughs> exactly. It's like we're because go- they said that this will be the final episode of Simple Gear. I still have hope that there's more, but it's like they knew this is going to be the end. Let's make this an ending. It didn't. The ending itself didn't feel very uh, definitive. It felt like. I felt like a normal Simfo Gear last episode for a season, but the but the actual after credit scene it was instead of being something that like hooked you to the next season, it was it wasn't anything to hook you. It was like 
It was, it was really like think think uh, like this is this is it. This is done. Yes, like thank you for so watching. Now, Here's just like a piece of what happens in the characters' lives next. Yeah, yeah, I, and I really enjoyed that. Um, although we have to discuss the fact that for, for a long while, I would say Simpho Gear has been referencing Evangelion. Yes, the last episode is the climax. Uh, okay, okay, I will first say. If you have not seen the end of Evangelion, click off now because by just the general fact that Simpho Gear did it. Okay, I'm gonna go this since I've been seeing it. What? You do it? <sighs> I, I actually have seen it, I was just like messing with you. So, if you, if, you have, if you haven't seen it, click off now because the, I'm about to talk about the ending of Evangelion through Simpho Gear, which is the okay. weirdest thing ever. But, so the ending. The very end has Shimha coming back after she's, like, defeated for one final time as this giant, like, ghost thing. Yeah, it's like the giant uh, hands thing. And then she grabs them, and then Shimha asks Hibiki if, basically, basically what Rei Ayanami and uh, the other guy... Karu? Who's the, Karu asked Shinji at the end of Evangelion... When she asked him, uh, they asked him, uh, does he choose to live this life forever or accept the real world, and even though it may be painful, even though it, it may hurt? Um, and, of course, Shinji accepts living rather than living in this fictional made-up world yeah. that he created for himself. Uh it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the it, exact same thing. There's, I feel like the themes of Evangelion, they're like intentionally referencing that all throughout the season of Sympho Gear. With like the ideas of being all everyone connected. And then this episode specifically, they just like the challenges and the pain is like what makes things that are worthwhile more worthwhile. Right, right. What makes... The, the Basically what this ending was trying to say, like, like you said, but it was like... It's basically saying... Life is life is tough, but that's what makes it beautiful. Like, you, like why would you give that up just because it's hard? Yeah, and I feel like that's like the whole answer to what Shemha was doing, like trying to unify everyone, trying to break down all the walls of communication. And this is her scene: is like the humans have defeated her, and she's now accepting. Okay, you can do something that I could not predict or understand. They also, uh, once again, bring up the, the Hedgehog's Dilemma from Evangelion, just randomly. <laughs> uh, but they don't, they don't say outright it's the Hedgehog's Dilemma, but they basically say, like, hey, getting close to people is kind of hard, and it sucks, oh, and yeah. it's, not, it's not easy for everybody, mm -hmm. but you, you got to let those walls down. Uh, and that's basically kind of in a sort of way what they were going for. It's one of the last scenes of Info Gear, and they were like just going straight in on the Evangelion stuff. I, I need to make a video that says that Fruits Basket and Info Gear are the same thing. Interesting. Go on. I mean, this season they're both that way. They're showing the importance of being connected to people, showing that it can be hard, but it's still worthwhile. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're both kind of absurd at times. Simple gear, slightly more so. Okay, slightly. completely more so, but that's beside the point. Also, hi, Satsuki. Oh, yeah, Satsuki's here. Yes, he won't click off. You just wail Evangelion. You're a terrible person. How do you feel about that? I'm sorry, Senpai. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm the terrible person. I don't know what to say. Okay, uh, but speaking of terrible people, we got Carol joining them for the final battle against uh, Shemha, which I thought was really cool because she's Carol, and it actually fit with the story, too, when they had, like, the whole seven harmonies being able to overcome the will of the gods. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she used her alchemy to yes. turn to turn her energy beam into solid gold. Yes, and like she was able to counter um, Shemha's silver beam thing, which is very, which is which is very interesting. But uh, this is like kind of like Carol's send off here, um, 
after this she dies. Yeah, well, we got that with what the season four, or actually, we got to that with now season three, four, and five villains, all with the send off, like their sacrifice enabling the Sinful Gears to win. Yeah, I guess finally it took three seasons or two seasons or whatever, but uh, Carol finally sacrificed herself. Yeah. Uh, and just Carol's just a really cool character, so it was nice seeing her be in this final battle with the Sinful Gears. Those are interesting. I don't really care too much for Elf Nine, but when Carol comes out, it's more fun. Yeah, just like Carol's a villain, and like all the villains are cool, or at least she is. Yeah, she's like, it's she's interesting. She just she just she does it for pretty much uh, Elf Nine at this point. Mm-hmm. Well, you even saw in the end, like her sacrificing only her memories to preserve Elf Nines. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought that was just an interesting showing like how much Carol cares about Elf Nine, how she's accepted her now. You know, that was uh, the last, the very last scene with Carol was was very uh, with Carol and Elf Nine was was interesting because uh, the dialogue, like if you take screenshots of this, like you can turn it into a meme easily. Where uh, I think uh, Elf Nine is like goodbye, other me, and then Carol's like yes, have a good day. Other me, I'm going to die now. <laughs> this little show is just memes. This, this, I, th- this was, <laughs> this is a. I will say this: if there is a memeable moment in Sinfo Gear, this is like one of the best ones. I want to say. No, I still think the bondage one is better. Oh, the bondage one! That was last episode, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Oh, that was great. Carol has had a lot of great lines. <laughs> exactly. In. I, I just imagine the uh, writers or whoever it is like going through this thing. I was okay. We need we need them to have this happen. And someone comes in. What if they say th- this line? And they're looking. This is stupid. Add it to the script. Pretty, pretty much. I just love to be like uh, in the writers' room or wherever it is where they come up with these ideas. So the uh, the big final attack, which is uh, the the super powered phonic game. I don't know, all of the ridiculousness of Sympho Gear in one thing. Exactly. Uh, it's called the Metanoia? And that's the name of the opening song for the season. Right, which which was played during this attack. So yes. if you didn't know, now you know. Because, of course, it's, it's a final episode. You have to play the opening during it. Right, of course. Uh, I think they did. Wasn't it last episode they reversed it? Wasn't it the ending and then the opening at the yeah, end? Yeah, because they played the opening as the ending song for that episode. It's very strange. It's anime. But, yeah, that's true. We actually didn't get any opening or ending this this whole episode. Well, didn't we get uh, the, the ending? Oh, no, we, we got the ending, It's just yeah. like the... It was just it was a different song. Credits. Okay, that could be. What song was that? Uh, it's one we never heard of before. Okay. Oh, and something, speaking of uh, the music, there weren't any song lyrics, uh, like, uh, subtitled this episode. Oh, yeah. I wonder why that is. I don't know. I know, like, there are issues with licensing and getting the lyrics to that, or maybe there was, like, a new song so they didn't have the translation ready. Yeah, so they probably couldn't, like, go to the people who wrote the song. Yeah, and be like, hey, can you, get the... can you like, confirm this is what it says? Well, no, I, I think they... You have to, like, one of the... With rights holders, you have to go to the people that write the song, too. Yeah, so... Like, you have to get a visit, like, an actual agreement from them. So maybe they weren't able to get an agreement. They should have people who fans of the last season translate the song. Oh, I'm sure they already have. I'm sure they've already fan subbed it anyways. Yeah, I should go find You that. know how fan subbing communities are. They, they have their own little thing. Yeah, I wonder if they did it because, like, a real reason for fan subs is if you don't have the official ones... So, yeah, I wonder if they were doing this episode of Sinful Gear, how quickly they do it. Could be. Okay, we should make a fan sub of a fake lead. Oh my god, I die. Alright, we're doing it. <laughs> what? I cry! Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so the first battle we had... Uh, it was interesting how, like, Shemha uh, was using all of her power. She had that mech thing, and the Death Lily even called her the Sinful Gear Killer. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny. Just just how this episode went, they pretty much defeated her with ease. Yeah, it 
Well, they were trying to, like, cram so much in the episode that it went, the battle itself went by kind of fast, though it was still definitely a cool battle. You know, with Kanata no Astra getting its first and last episode's double link, they should have double linked this one. Yeah, because then they could have, like, the first half of it go all out for the battle and then had enough time to, like, uh, like show the world afterwards. The little fighting we did get was, like, really good, too. So I... I... It would have been nice to see like an extended battle because this this episode I think I have a note that just says this episode went full Dragon Ball Z because it it did it just did it was just a bunch of energy laser beams a bunch of crazy awesome fluid action uh, there is that when when Carol was holding off the the beam and turning the beam into gold oh uh, yeah there is that great great animation where they're having a conversation. Uh, and Ibiki starts yelling about her feelings for Miku. It was really good. Yeah, and I like that we got Hibiki to like actually acknowledge how she feels about Miku. It's like, what is she fighting for? She's not fighting to save anyone. She's fighting for something she wants. Right, right, exactly. She doesn't... At this point, she doesn't care about anything else besides Miku and saving her. Exactly. It's like she... Because, like, a hero, you're supposed to want to save anyone, and Hibiki probably does to some degree, but, like, she's fighting for Miku. And something else that I thought was interesting, too, is when Hibiki nearly uh, struck Shemha, uh, Shemha basically used the Miku voice saying, are you going to hurt me, or whatever it was. I forget get the exact line. And then basically caught Hibiki off guard with that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. She uses uh, Miku for a moment to, yeah. uh, to catch him. Yeah, it's, will you kill me with your cursed fist? That was the line. Mm-hmm. And then we also got the part later on with Hibiki and like her cursed fist being like it could be both a curse and a blessing depending on how you look at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is, did they like, did they wrap up actually that curse stuff, the curse of Balal? Um, kind of. I think Hibiki somehow was able to break that, and, like, through the emotional connection of all the world, that gave her the power to uh, break Shemhai out of Miku. So what you're saying is Shemhai was inside of Miku? Yes, but not in that way. Could you could you say it slower? Good night. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, thank you, everyone, for watching this InfoGear podcast. It has been lovely. No! <laughs> I was kidding. I feel like we've been watching too much Science Gate. This is true. This is true. But Science Gate's good, so. Yes. But yes, we uh, they defeated uh, Shemha he, with Hibiki hugging Miku because, of course, friendship and all that. But then they still had, uh, needed to defeat Yggdrasil, who is now like using all the computers of the world to do whatever Yggdrasil does. Yeah, and then they, there's that big orb. And they start singing in Latin or German or whatever it is. Yeah, and they do, and it, again, it goes back to like they need the seven songs to like overcome the will of the gods, and that's the was a discovery that Carol had made like the secret of the world. So that was like wrapping up everything she had learned is now being able to use to help the Symphogears. Gears. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I loved, I loved this scene where they they all sung together and and all of these people came down from the uh, the last. Four seasons. Oh, we had uh, Miku it, there too singing. You're right. Miku was in a Sympho gear, which we haven't, besides, you know, her as Shimha, we've technically seen her in a Sympho gear, but we haven't seen, like, her, like, actually really in a Sympho gear as her yeah. since season two. So I feel like that was kind of like a bit of fan service, like, bring something people wanted back for the end. But they also right, kind of justified right. in that they needed seven songs to do it. And since Carol was gone now. Which is funny because I was looking at the Sympho Gears this season and the way they looked, and I was like, they're really laying on that fan service for this one. Well, in multiple Some ways. of them are like really questionable if they would actually function that way. The Sympho Gear like is all about. Like what? Yeah. Well, this show is all about fan service in all the ways of fan service. Like, it's like, what do the fans yeah. want? Cool action and characters wearing not many clothes. It's, It's like. It is the ultimate form of fan service. It, it goes like in every direction of what you would consider fan service in anime. Exactly. All, all of it. It's great. Yes, Dialogue, is... references. Oh, yes. Skimpy clothing. References. Action. We... 
Uh, we got Hebe Key making more Gurren Lagann references. Ah, yes. It was like her saying like her fist is something that will like pierce. And like the common thing about Gurren Lagann is it, it is a drill that will pierce the heavens. So Hebe Key is using her fist to pierce a god, basically. So that's God, heavens, that fits. So yes. So what, much... you're so... so what you're saying is Hibiki is it pierced a god and is now inside of that god. No. But PBK huh. should show up in Promare. I, you know, Hibiki would work at, like great. Like she works awesome in this show because, she, like, of course she's the main character. But uh, she would like be awesome in so many other shows because, especially Dragon Ball Z, she would fit right in. Oh yeah, her and Goku would get along great. They probably or Goku probably want to fight her, but <laughs> Goku. It's it's weird because I comparing. I think Goku would just destroy Hibiki. <laughs> but well, there's also a part of me that's like, Hibiki is like super freaking powerful too. Yeah, uh, you have like the different power scaling of the two series because like Sinfo Gear traditionally keeps everything to one planet and occasionally mm-hmm. the moon. Hibiki... <laughs> Hibiki has fought multiple gods. Was it She's multiple? okay with it. I think, I think it's the, multiple. Isn't Shemhal the first actual god they fought? I thought, what? What is Fine then? What? Well, yeah, because Fine was back with the god, so maybe she was a god, and like she was I, in a weakened state. But godlike people, she she fights the godlike people on occasion. Exactly. <laughs> Goku has done it a couple times. Mm-hmm. And but, then after they fight, they both. Then after they fight, they go eat like a giant buffet of food. Of course. Of course. Chris would also join them. And Chris would be like, what Chris kind of... Chris would be like, also oh, best buds. Yes, like they're off to the background making snarky comments while also encouraging Goku and Hibiki. I don't like that Kakarot. Yeah, and Chris is just like, I both, agree. They're both scenarios <laughs> to uh, their main character. Right. I right. did like it how he had Chris who was like encouraging Hibiki when they went to go after Eudrasil. Like you could show that Chris caring about Hibiki there. Yeah, there's like Chris and Hibiki this is it's been like a thing forever. Since the first season, I think. But like they're like like if they're really tight. Yeah, they are. Oh, there's another comment that they made, like, after they were singing the song to, like, uh, take your stole the Eudrasil thing. But they're saying, like, this is the story of, like, hands being er, being held by hands during battle. And I feel like they just knew what the anime community was thinking about hand-holding. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of hand-holding. Like, every time somebody gets their hand held in, in this anime, it's just immediate blush. And just every... Every single thing that comes with hand-holding. Yep. This is officially my favorite anime about hand-holding. This may have some of the best hand-holds. I think my favorite one is is from this season, actually, where Hibiki holds uh, Tsubasa's hand. And I was like, that's great. That's some great friendship right there. Exactly. It, like, the hand-holding is very symbolic, too. It's not there just for fan service. It actually, like, drives the feelings of the characters together. Right. Right, Exactly. Right, they need to make more handshakers, because that's the second best show about hand- holding hands. Didn't they? Didn't they make more handshakers? They did, surprisingly. They're probably going to make more, aren't they? I kind of hope so. But I also dropped the second season, so. Interesting. I should have waited for the dub. Why didn't you wait for the dub? I don't know if it was being dubbed. Yeah, Satsuki, you should watch Sinfo Gear because there's hand holding. <laughs> you know, I guarantee you there's a lot of hentai for Sinfo Gear. Oh, there has to be. The, all, yeah, probably more hentai than uh, we would want to know about. There's gotta be tons for Chris. Gotta be. No, I'm just thinking there'd be hentai where all they do is hold hands and say how much they care about each oh. other, but that's all. <laughs> Just yeah, it's just somebody should upload it to that hentai site where uh, it's just the whole story. It's just it's just it's just like twenty four pages of them literally just holding hands and talking about how much they they like each other and like 
That would be funny. No, they should, uh, like, someone should compile, like, all the hand holding clips together and put, like, best of Symphony Gear lewd scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to go do that, but I think I'll attract the wrong type of people to my channel. Oh, my God. Hey, that, there, there was, I mean, I think people can make actually a bunch of lewd compilations from this season. Because there's the crotch flood, the flying crotch attack. There is, uh, there's the boob missiles. Uh, the boob missiles, of course. Uh, there's like the uh, bashing with TBK and Miku. Uh, where Miku acts like she's Chris. I mean, she doesn't act like Chris in the bathtub. True. Wait, what? Uh, we also have. Crap, I forgot what I was going to say because of the other comments. Oh, we have the boob grab with Hibiki and Chris. Oh, oh yeah, they, they smash up boobs together. No, that's Chris and Maria. Was... They also smash up boobs together. Exactly. This show knows, knew what it was doing the entire time. They did They did that in a, when they were fighting Carol. And then in the first season, she showed up. And like the one of the last episodes, they... Uh, they they touch boobs together and then they use their ultimate attack, which is, I think is their ultimate attack is them touching boobs together. Speaking of ultimate attack, we got an ultimate attack with uh, uh, Maria, Kiriki, and Shirabe combining their attack together and like forming a giant robot and throwing that after Shemha. <laughs> oh yeah, we're, I don't know what right, that was a reference did. to, but I, that had to be a reference to something. It I mean it probably did yeah. What it is, I have no idea. Exactly. We don't need to know. It's info gear. It just references stuff. Maybe they'll somewhere in the comments will explain it like they did with the Enki guy. Oh, yeah. Enki. Yes. Enki. Enki is a, Enki uh, is a good guy. This show so we didn't. Enki. So I, I must say, like, from an overall perspective, this is a, a very good episode of Sympho Gear. Uh, because it's one of the few that doesn't have any, like, glaring plot holes that are like kind of frustrating not in it like plot holes not in a good way uh yeah yeah like, it doesn't have any gigantic logic leaps or anything like that it doesn't like in the second to last episode dump some sao style stuff on you yeah i feel like there is some of that with like the seven songs being all over kind of like shemha but at the same time it sort of fit as like carol's answer to the world that she knew and I think, mm -hmm. like, with alchemy, all the plants and lighting and stuff like that, it sort of fits. Right. It fits uh, with the simple gear logic. Right, right. Um, I would say, like I said uh, before, uh, this doesn't exactly feel definitive. and It doesn't feel as definitive as it could have been. Yeah. I think I was fully prepared to see, like, more between these characters after the battle ended. I mean, all we got was, like, Miku and Hibiki, which is disappointing. We also didn't get the moon punch scene, but I think I think I knew we kind of wasn't, weren't going to getting that. We got punching like, on the three moon. Up, three or four episodes ago. We got punching on the moon, so I think that's close enough. And I think where it was going, I think there was bigger things than punching the moon at that point, but... Um... I would say overall, this is one of the better episodes. Yeah. Not the best. Th that stretch of like eight to like episodes six, seven, eight, and nine, I want to say. Yeah, like it was just amazing. Subasify and her father and everything that led up to that. Yeah, that was like that was that wasn't just quality Sinfo gear. That was some quality anime. I think it was just like it was much more human focused than a, like crazy save the world focused. Right, it was wrapping up a bunch of character arcs. And I feel like that's what's made this season so good. Like, pretty much all the characters got some type of arc to, like, drive their story forward, or at least wrap it up. Mm -hmm. And it's part of the reason this wow. season felt, like, so crammed in. They try to give all the characters something. The score on my anime list went up by 0.2 points. It's at an 8.64. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I... So I guess since we're talking about the season as a whole, what are your overall thoughts on the season? Uh, be be real quick, before that, uh -huh. it is officially the highest rated anime of summer 2019. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is... It's rated high. That's incredible. <laughs> I don't know if I would quite agree with it, but it's simply here, so I'll let it go. 
it is Sifo Gear. I will let it go because I actually really enjoy Sifo Gear more higher, than. Is it higher than Fruits Basket? Yes, it is significantly higher than Fruits Basket. That's uh, kind of amazing, so we'll take it. Um, I think Fruits Basket. Uh, well, actually, Kimetsu is up to a nine, but that started in the last season, so that's why that didn't show up. Okay. Fruits Basket is an eight point three. Okay. Kimetsu is almost a nine. I just can't. I that's one I don't agree with. One bit. I, yeah, I, I dropped that one. I might give it another try. This, as you said, it ended up becoming good. It it did. It was enjoyable by the end. It was fun. It was it, by the end. I was like, oh, okay. Well, why did you take twenty episodes? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not that hard for me to like a shonen. Right. You yeah. just gotta like introduce all the psych- psycho characters first. Exactly, and not the boring characters. They should have let off with Shinobu. I would have been okay with that. Yeah, and like, don't make your characters boring or cliche or pointless or wonder what you're doing. Yeah, Nezuko. Exactly. If you you want your main side character to be more than just a cute girl. Right, right, right. right, Make them a death lolly who is actually fun. Right. I like how, as we're saying this, we're praising Symphogear, a series known for its plot holes. Exactly. I never said to Kimetsu no Yaiba didn't have plot holes or had plot holes or anything about plot holes there. It has pot holes! (laughs) Hey! Exactly. Drugs uh, solve everything. (laughs) That was was terrible. (laughs) Oh, pot holes. There is no pot holes to speak of in this whole anime. I don't know. (laughs) Oh, God. I think C has been doing the pot holes. Uh... So, what was, like, your favorite parts in the season? Mine, one of mine is the, uh, the the clone jutsu with the cars. Yes, that... I liked a lot of the parts with Noble Red, like, trying to, like, fighting as the underdogs against the Sinfo Gears. Yes, that was the best part. Noble Red, by far the best antagonist in the whole series. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like, Shimha is cool as, like, a villain and all, but it's like, she's just a villain, Noble Red just had, like, they're very human. They're trying to fight. They're desperate. You can see, like, how they're uh, falling, too, like, t- embracing the monster side of them. Like, you see. They're the anti heroes. Kind of. Oh, they're definitely villains. Like, they, instead of, like, reaching or trying to reconcile with the Sinful Gears when they keep reaching out to them, they push them further away. But it makes sense when you consider their mindset. Right. Man, I, and I'm still. I still think they should have let those three live because i think there's like a story to be told there because they were like we can't go back as humans because we're like literally monsters now but i think it would have been better to tell the story of them living because you can cut like there's a story there's they can go back from that and tell that story but well it's like what they do with uh, the characters in season two like uh, kiriki sharve amaria how like their season three and four arc was like them redeeming themselves like, they're right. burdened by guilt. They're wanted to make up for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like if they were more simple gear, they could have done the same thing with Noble Red. And maybe not have them as much in the focus because then the main cast gets kind of crowded, but still have them off to the side trying to help out and then trying to make up for everything they did. Just have them in the control room. Exactly. And like Elfman, then to put, uh, give them out of the control room when you actually need them to contribute to the plot. And then just show them afterwards, be like, yeah, we got a job working here. We're very happy now. Because We're, you always have your villains working your top tier government facilities. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Elf Nine. Look at her. Yeah. Maria. Yeah, Mar- the death lollies. Exactly. We need more death lollies. As long as they kill people, I'm totally okay with this. All right. I'm telling Sotsky. Sotsky, screenshot that. Oh, God. Um, but then they could have, like, you know... Like that would just been a cool thing. I, I felt they they lacked in this episode on like what the what are the characters doing afterwards. I feel like the season needed like two or three more episodes to like really be the season it needed to, or it wanted to be. Probably, yeah. Yeah, it's like they they had so much they wanted to cram into these thirteen episodes, and they did the best they can. But you can definitely feel it could have been better if they had a few more episodes. Yeah, this this episode. It was, it was rushed in certain parts for sure, mm-hmm. but I, they did the best they could. Yes, I I don't have any real complaints about the show. It's Info Gear. It's fun. 
And, like, they used every episode up as best as they could. Yeah, there's no filler episodes. Right. Like, every this episode... This was probably, like... Like, what this feels like, it feels like every other episode besides this episode was paced fairly well. And then this episode was like, ah, oops. Well, I, I feel like the others were, like, kind of overly crammed in, too. Like, maybe not so much as a bad thing, but it's like they were putting as much in it as they, as they could without messing with the quality. Well, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was, it was, it was, it was good. I am very sad to see the show go. I, I definitely, it's, I don't, this show is really good. And it's very weird because, like, there are plot holes in the show, but, like, it's one of those anime that I've watched, and I don't think I've watched another anime quite like this, where I know there's issues with it, but I still think it's a really damn good anime. Yeah, I can definitely think there have been some shows like it where I could take a look and say, well, if you think about it this way, like, here's where the plot falls apart, the, this part was boring, but then when I look at the show, like, it's a show I completely love. It's like, it's hard to explain, but it's just an anime that you have to really watch to understand it. Mm -hmm. Like, I was talking to uh, XB in your Discord today, like, trying to explain to, to him what Sinfo Gear is, and it's like, you can't really understand Sinfo Gear unless you watch it. Right. Like uh, You can certainly, like, you can explain a lot of it. Like, you can explain how it's, like, it's got lots of references in it, and mm -hmm. generally the plot. But, yeah, you're right. It's it's very... You definitely have to see it. Yeah, like, I compare I it to, to Twin Tales, and, like, in tone it's similar, but still Sinfo Gear is a very unique show. Right. And it's very hard to, like... I also feel sometimes, I feel like when I try to explain it, I feel like I'm sometimes... Ex like, I'm like I'm, like I'm explaining a, like a very dark magical girl show uh -huh. where they're just killing off little girls for fun for, for, because it's, like, gore porn. But it, it's, like, nothing like that at all. Yeah, like... like I it's love so far from that. I love dark magical girl shows, and yes, Sinfo Gear is dark, and yes, it's a magical girl show, but it does not feel like a dark magical girl show. Muhammad says, I will absolutely miss the Sinfo Gear franchise as a whole. Potential New Year's is a Sinfo Gear or movie or some new project, perhaps? I... Uh, you know what? I don't know if we talked about this, but I would love it if they re... like, if they did... like, they did Sinfo Gear in the same universe, in the same world, call it something different, new characters and the old characters show up. Isn't that like what they do with Lyrical Nanaha or something like that? Maybe. I like his uh, description of Sinfo Gear Muhammad saying, take magical girls, remove magic, and turn into more cybernetic night girls. <laughs> As she does, says, it took Rising 36 minutes to mention Twin Tales. I hope everything's okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't worry. There will be more Twin Tails things coming. We should do it. Let's do a Twin Tails podcast. Oh my god, it's been so long since I've seen it. All right, Twin Tails podcast in three. What? Wait, I probably do should it. not be counting down to a podcast when I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> oh my god. It's... I feel a lot of Twin Tails and Sifo gear would be like a lot of the same conversation, but instead you would just, like, I would like, Say basically what I'm saying now for Sinfo Gear, but then, like, but think of, like, all of that, but, like, actually good? And then you would be like, it's actually good! <laughs> exactly. It's like, they're both really good, but in completely different ways. And, like, Twin Tales is more, like, thematically rich, but the themes are, like, hidden. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. Uh, Twin Tales is weird. Uh, someone says, I really miss this anime. I follow from the beginning of the saga until today. Yeah. Uh, that's it, it tomorrow by Jill. Yeah, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, which I probably did. Uh, so now that Sifu Gear is done, rises on reviews, enemy franchises, will you be a fan religiously? Twin Tails. I mean, I kind of All already right. am. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. But, but yeah, I, I don't think my channel will be focused only on a single anime. Like, i do more with Fruits Basket. I want to do more with Hunter x Hunter. I want to do things with lots of different shows. 
Mm-hmm. I should probably do like a season or like a series review of Sinful Gear now that we have this season. Though it's kind of hard to review because I can't approach it how I would most shows when I review them. Yeah, it's very weird. I asked for like, I think it was like 20 likes on my Sinfo, my last Sinfo Gear video to see if anybody like wanted to see more like of the Sinfo Gear season reviews because I'm going to be reviewing them season by season. Oh, okay. And it got like 60 likes, so... Okay, so yeah. People, okay. Yeah. Maybe I could do like a, more of a breakdown of like the message of it and things like that. Or why... So I see wants to do a quintessential quintuplets podcast. I'm sorry, continue. Oh, Muhammad was saying, like, uh, uh, saying God knows if it, his Twin Tails will get a second season. I was like, yes, it needs a second season. Go tell KyoAni to make a second season of Twin Tails. Right, exactly. And yes, we know KyoAni didn't do season one, but I'm, I trust them to do season two. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like, I know, like, KyoAni didn't do season one, but, like, I trust them, okay? I trust them. I know not a lot of people do, but I do. They're the complete opposite studio of my normal tastes. Yeah, I usually don't watch much QNA anime anymore. I want, hey, I got finished watching Moggy Brilliant Part. That was fantastic. Yeah, I dropped that one after two episodes. I cry. So, um, cry yeah, final that. thoughts on Gear or anything like that? Uh, as the series as a whole... Wow, I mean, this was a great series. Uh, I recommend this to anyone of uh, almost any taste. There are like some like I don't think people that watch slice of life anime will get or even like this anime. But if you like shonen, like if you like if you like any shonen, this is like JoJo levels of of wildness and insanity. Like if you like JoJo, this will you'll be at home at home with this in terms of that. Yeah, I can definitely uh, if you like Dragon Ball Z, you'll like this. If, if you like Naruto, you'll... If you, God, if you like Naruto, this will be one of your favorite anime ever. Uh, this is a great show. Uh, I feel like if you like uh, Imai Ishii, the trigger guy, his works combined with like a shonen themes, then this that's basically what this is. It's, it's, this is so weird. It's like Magical Girls, um, but it's shonen. But it's also kind of like JoJo, and it's also referential, and it's also tons and tons of action, mm-hmm. and there's drama, also romance. I, it's it's so like there's everything like in here. It's it's a smorgasbord. Uh, yes, yeah, because yeah, there's like the touches of romance with Hibiki and uh, Miku, and I feel like it's just enough. Like we know it's there, even though it's not focused, but we see it too often. We want it. Um, as for Sinfogar Season 5 being in terms of anime that have solely aired in this season being the highest rated uh, being the high, highest rated anime this season I'm not sure if I agree with that but one of the highest rated I think that's fair to say I think you know around 7.9 or an 8 yeah. maybe even an 8.1 I, I, it's it's definitely like for me, it is the highest rated one. Yeah. Oh, I was putting together my list for like the top of the year, and I, I think Astro Lost in Space still beats it for me, just because I really liked all the plot twists and sci-fi stuff. But this I see is probably second place. God, it's so hard to say. Yeah, they're like uh, so different shows too. Like, how do you say which one's better? I, I think for me, it's got to be Fruits Basket number one by a wide margin. So for gear, and then. Uh, probably Vinland Saga. Oh yeah, I need to watch Vinland Saga. May, and then maybe Kanata no Astra, and then everything else. This season has been really so, good. Actually, I'm sorry, Doctor Stone top tippity top number one. All right, thank you for everyone for watching. I'm not taking <laughs> you off kidding, the podcast. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't mean that really. But yeah, I wonder if. Uh, like uh, Muhammad is saying, like Miami list making Symphonic Gear get more international exposure because people see, oh, what's going on this season? Wait, what's this anime at, season, at number one spot that I haven't heard of before? Which is weird because I think I found out about Symphonic Gear because Rising was like, hey, I found this like weird anime. You want to watch it? And I was like, at the time, I was like, I mean, not really, but I mean, why not? And then after the first episode, I was like, all right, I want to watch more of this. Yeah, and I like Muhammad's comment too, like seeing how much the anime landscape is changing with like uh, Fairy Tail ending, Symphony Gear ending, Ash finally winning in Pokemon. 
Wow. Actually, and there's another show that reminds me a lot of Simpho Gear that I'm really excited to, like, maybe I'll get more into that on my channel. And that is, of course, Fate Khalid. I think, All right. I never thought I'd see those two compared, but okay. I mean, they're both <laughs> absurd magical girl shows, and they both get pretty dark at times. Yeah. But I don't like Fate Khalid. I'm sorry. But have you seen Chiro? I have. I've seen plenty. I, plenty of Shiro, my friend. Not that Shiro. I've seen things I don't want to see of Shiro. Oh, you haven't seen Shiro yet. I, I have seen what Saber does with those things, and I don't want to ever see that again. Okay, good to know. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, we've been going for 45 minutes. So thank you, everyone, who has tuned in to watch us. I think this might be the most people I've gotten to watch the podcast at once. So I kind of don't want to end it now, but... Hey, are you doing any podcasts next season? I don't know. Uh, follow me on Twitter where I will announce any podcasts that happen. I might take a break. Also from... here, you usually announce them here, right? Uh, well, sort of. But yes, follow me on YouTube if you're not already, though I'd appreciate you know that. Well, I probably won't do weekly ones, so I might do a couple one-off ones. <laughs> okay, I'm reading Stan Fasowski. So uh, anyway, see, where can they find you? Uh, find me on the main channel, which is C Tactics. You also find me on my new channel, which is Bento, where I talk. I'm going to be talking about Fate Grand Order. Speaking of Shiro, we're not going to be talking about Shiro. Probably going to be talking about John Alter and uh, uh, Mash. Mash is cool. She was cool. Yeah, she, she was. Got, she got the big shield thing. Like yeah. she's great. She's shield hero. Yeah, she. She'll tell us probably going to be a little bit better than this, but at least the one I've seen, not saying yet. I still got to watch it. All right, so you've seen the Grand Order is terrible, and that anyone who likes it should go uh, subscribe to Satsuki. I think everybody should just subscribe to Satsuki anyways. Exactly. Everyone subscribe to Satsuki. I should add him to the description. Exactly. All right. Satsuki, just click on his name. Um, go to, wait, would that mess this up? Or I guess you can't really click on his name, but if you click on the three dots, if you click on the three dots next to Satsuki, you can go to his channel. Okay, I've added Satsuki's channel to the description. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> exactly. You will have to refresh to see those changes, but beautiful indeed. Beautiful. It will be in the uh, VOD that will be up once I put it up. Hopefully before I go out of town for a week. Right. Um, exactly. yeah, so they can follow. Oh, also join C's Discord because that's also the Discord where I hang out and post uh, funny pictures of Simple Gear and Twin Tails and Fruits Basket and ReZero. Your description also says C's Discord where I hang out and post funny screenshots. <laughs> yes, it does. So I think you just said the same. Oh, the thing just it just added automatically. Okay. Saucy's channel is now there. Nice. Okay, so and also check out Wikipedia because it's a good website. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so check out the Discords, the Twitters, the... Oh, also, do I have Amino in there? Maybe. Yes, uh, check out do. my Amino where I will be covering more, like, current events in anime. I might make a video about the final episode of Symphony Gear and that ending, though actually I probably won't until later. But I'll make videos like that about stuff, so go check that out, too, if you're interested. Oh, yeah, I'll probably, like, have reviews for Symphony Gear Seasons... Two through five. I already have a review for season one. I have plenty of Simple Gear videos on my channel. Like, I have a ton. I need to do more. I need to do more lots of videos. Uh, see, will you edit my videos for you if I pay you on a uh, cheesecake? I don't like cheesecake, but I'll risk it. All right. Everyone will be able to see cheesecake. <laughs> oh, my God. I need to open a P.O. box so people can actually waste their money and, money and send me cheesecake oh i will mail you mail. things you know i will oh god <laughs> we should both open p.o boxes and <laughs> just send each other crap exactly though if you have your return address with people actually then again i don't care if Cena's my address but then what happens if i accidentally send you stuff that i don't actually mean to send you like this half-used bottle of snuggle what's snuggle I don't have an idea, but it's some type of air freshener. 
<laughs> okay, uh, yes. Um, we'll be doing a giveaway for C's Half Empty uh, Bottle of Snuggle. To enter, all you have to do is join the Discord and say you want to enter. I guess that's what we're doing. Exactly. So, yes, thank you everyone for watching this insanity that's almost as insane as the show itself. So, say goodbye, people. Goodbye, people. Goodbye. We love you all. Yes. Uh,